Thank you for joining us on the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis YouTube channel for another Bible study. I'm thankful that you, the members of Mount Sinai, and everyone else that will view this video at any time in the future will be blessed uh, by what is said. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for providing us another opportunity to gather virtually uh, to learn how we can use calmness of mind to bear adversities. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 5. Philippians chapter 4, verse 5. It reads, Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. And I want to talk about peace comes through standing fast. Peace comes through standing fast. So how do we stand fast? How do we avoid being shaken by uh, the things that come upon us in life? And basically uh, having a keeping a calmness of mind, knowing that the Lord is with us no matter what happens. And if he brought us to it, he's well able to take us beyond it. Uh, so peace comes through standing fast. Moderation is calmness of mind to bear adversities. Adversity is an affliction, a distress, a misery, a disaster, a trouble, suffering, trials, and tribulations. And Job is a good example of remaining calm most of the time, at least while going through adversities. Job was steadfast and calm until his three friends uh, visited him and got to him with their accusations that perhaps he had done something wrong, something displeasing to God that had caused God to allow uh, him to uh, be faced with the disaster that struck him. Now, while Job was going through one disaster after another, he remained calm. While he was losing all of his children, he remained calm. While all of his stuff, his riches were leaving, uh, he still remained calm. And he said, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. When his wife lost her trust in him, he remained steadfast in his trust in the Lord. When his wealth failed him, when he was infested with sore boils from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, he yet trusted the Lord and put his trust on display by saying, even though you slay me, yet will I trust you. We as believers are to display peace in Jesus and trust in him when life turns on us, when sicknesses strike, when our finances dwindle, when our spouse don't act right, when our children are acting like they've lost their mind, we must learn to display calmness through it all. Adversities are not uh, without comfort and hope to believers because we have Jesus who is our hope and the Holy Spirit who comforts us. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse 13 says, but we do not want you to be uninformed. Uh, King James version says, ignorant brothers about those who are asleep. And that's when death strikes, that's one of the adversities that hurts the most. But Paul goes on to say, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. In other words, when, when adversities come upon us, we should not grieve like others do. We should not fall apart. We should not grumble and complain like those that have no hope because Jesus is our hope. Most of the time, darkness brings about a fear of the unknown or what we can't see. When we can't see how God is going to work things out for our good, 
when we know we have messed up and can't see God extending mercy and grace to us, it's time like those that we wait in anticipation like a child that, de that deserves a whooping and you don't get what you deserve. That's the way life is with the Lord. We know that there are times when we deserve what we get. And instead, the Lord gives us mercy and grace, mercy to keep us from getting what we deserve and grace to give us what we don't deserve. And, and knowing that we can have patience and calmness to wait on what might come. The word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And therefore, we must trust. God's word. Psalms 27 verse 1 through 5, the English Standard Version says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my salvation and whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life and of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail or, or, or come upon me to eat of my flesh, my adversaries and my foes. It is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamps against me, my heart shall never fail and I shall not fear. Though wars arise against me and all around me, yet I will be confident. One thing I have asked of the Lord and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the days of trouble. And he will counsel, conceal me under the covers of his tent. And he will lift me high upon a rock so I don't have to worry about the unknown. I can remain calm. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 16 and 17 of the message version for simplicity and understandability uh, says every part of the scripture is God breathed and useful one way or another, showing us truth, exposing our rebellion, correcting our mistakes, training us to live God's way. Through the word, we are put together and shaped up for the task that God has for us. Philippians 4, verse 11 through 13 says, Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content, to remain calm. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound in any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. And, and, and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul is talking about more than having stuff or not having stuff. Or having a good meal or not having a good meal. All the stuff that we, we need. The Lord has promised to provide for us all of the stuff that Paul needs. He has learned that through prayer and supplication to make his request known unto the Lord, who will provide according to his riches and glory. Philippians 4 19 says, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Malachi 3 and 10 says, I'm, and, I, and, 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 and I'm so glad that I can depend on God's word to see me through, to be a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path, to show me the right way to go when adversities come upon me. Again, Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 says, uh, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. 
If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And then Genesis chapter 22, verse 12 through 15 says, and he said, do not lay your hands on the boy. This is God talking to, to uh, Abraham when he took Isaac up on the mountain to offer him to, uh, as a sacrifice according to God's direction to him. And, and, and you have to understand the type of adversity that Abraham is going through. All of those years that he had asked the Lord and the Lord had promised to provide him an heir. He got together with his wife and they uh, did their thing and, 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 and ended up making a bad situation. And, and, and then God comes along on his time and fulfills his promise. The Lord will provide. So Abraham said, do not let the, the, well, the angel rather, when Abraham had Isaac on the altar with the knife drawn back to sacrifice him, the angel spoke and said, do not lay your hands on the boy and uh, or do anything to him. For now, I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horn. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide, Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. And I don't know about you, but I can't read that verse, those verses without thinking about God gave his only begotten son on a hill called Calvary. And and and, and he was not that nobody spoke to him and said, what you about to do to your son, Jesus, your only begotten son. Don't do it because Jesus was the ram of God that came to take away the sins of the world and had not. God given what we could not provide for ourselves. And so often in life, if God doesn't come through for us in our adversities, where would we be? Life would be most miserable. Paul also reminds us that we can remain at peace or calm because uh that's a need that the Lord will supply. Whatever it is, we can remain calm. And if he doesn't supply, he, can, uh, uh, we, he, he will ensure that we can make it without it because he strengthens us to do so. Too many believers think that Christianity is mostly about what the Lord gives us, but we need to also think in terms of what the Lord uh, can help us make it without. We don't need everything we see or want. The Lord knows what we need better than we do. Psalm 37 verse 4 and 4 through 7 says, delight yourself that instead of spending all your time wanting or in wants bill, delight yourself in the Lord also and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourselves because of him who prosperous in his ways because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. But here's what we should do. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow has an, uh, uh, enough uh, anxieties and troubles of itself, sufficient for the day 
is its own trouble. The psalmist shares this reminder with us that he's a present help, a very present help in trouble. It's easy to be steadfast and calm when everything is working out our way. But what about when you're being lied on and talked about? When life is falling apart, don't act like you, you've you never experienced life falling apart because we all, that's a part of life. I'm talking about when you don't know which way to turn, when if it wasn't for bad news, you wouldn't have no news at all. I'm talking about if it isn't one thing, it's another. Yes, we need to be calm when our stomachs are growling from hunger, just as when we're rubbing our stomach and feeling the delight of just finishing a delicious meal. With the Lord keeping us, we can have a life that appears to be smooth sailing instead of peaks and valleys with a lot of ups and downs. I know life is, it, it, is filled with, with ups and downs, but our lives should not appear to others that way. When they look at us, they should be able to surmise, there goes a person that the Lord is keeping. Through it all, the Lord is keeping it. People around us should have a hard time knowing whether or when we are going through things. Well, I've got to leave you alone now. But don't forget that Jesus went through the worst of a, a for us on a cross on Calvary. He died and they buried him in a borrowed tomb. But early... Sunday morning, he rose with all power in his hands. Let me leave you with the words of this song. Andrea Crouch, before he passed, uh, uh, did this song. It says, I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave me blessed consolation that my trials come to only make me strong through it all, through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God through it all. I've learned to depend on his word. I've been lost to a lot of places and I've seen a lot of faces. There have been times that I felt all alone. But in my lonely hours, yes, those precious lonely hours, Jesus let me know that I was his, his very own through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. I've learned to depend on his word. And I thank God for the mountains in life. I thank him for the valleys. I thank him for the storms that he has brought me through. For if I never had a problem, I wouldn't know God could solve them. I'd never have known what faith in God could do. Through it all, remain calm. Remain at peace and amaze the world. And cause those that don't know Jesus in the pardon of their sin have not accepted him as their Lord and Savior will because of the peculiarness in you, the way you live, the way you handle adversity. They, they just might come to you and ask, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to have that type of calmness in adversities? Let us pray. Our Father, we realize that we were born into a lifetime of troubles, just as Job stated in his book in chapter 5. And we are trusting that you will make our latter days our best days as you did, Job. Give us this peaceful assurance. In Jesus' name, amen. As always, wear your mask in public. 
and uh, practice social distancing and wash your hands often. Stay safe and this too shall pass. Bye-bye.